What's going on, Ambitious Vet? Welcome to episode number 57 of the Ambitious Vet Show with U.S. Navy veteran, community activist, and the upcoming running candidate for the U.S. Congress, District 53 in California, Jose Caballero. Welcome to the Ambitious Vet, where we believe if you desire more, you have to become more. My name is Chris Hoffman, Marine Combat Veteran turned passion driven entrepreneur. On this show, I dive into the trenches with today's top military veteran thought leaders and influencers who know what it takes to not only pay the bills after the military, but really make an impact. You're going to hear their stories, their failures, and even some golden grenades to empower you to execute on what matters most to your life right now. Are you feeling lost, confused, or maybe just a little bit foggy on what the next steps are in executing that next mission that matters most to your life? Here's the thing. Since 2016 and building the world's largest personal professional development movement on the planet, we have found that stability, human capital, and just hitting a lid on what your current abilities are is what's limiting veterans just like you that's listening to this in achieving that next step that you desire most. Here's my personal invitation to you. I want you to come and hightail it over to the Ambitious Vet Tribe on Facebook where we have over 600 plus veterans committed to integrity, relationship building, and just getting better every single day. Guys, with daily posts to drive conversations, meaningful conversations that is, and weekly passion-driven tip, uh, five-minute, ten-minute subject matter expertise videos, and not to mention the Ambitious Vet Live show every Thursday afternoon, you will have no excuse to equip yourself and what you need to accomplish what matters most in your life. That's the Ambitious Vet Tribe on Facebook. The link will be in the comments below. Look forward to seeing you there. Hey, this is Stephen, host of Knucklehead Podcast, and you're listening to the Ambitious Vet Podcast with Chris Hoffman. All right, Ambitious Vet, welcome to episode number 57 of the Ambitious Vet Show. Thank you for tuning in as always. Um, you know, I have to be responsible for not launching an episode for about two weeks. Thank you for being patient for us. Truth be told, me and Maggie went on a 10-day disconnect to reconnect on what matters most is kind of what we've been telling everyone in our network. And I got to tell you, if you haven't taken the time to get your head out of the trenches and just kind of gain perspective, go connect with family if you guys are close to them, um, or just even we went to a lake house for about two days over the weekend in Big Bear, California, and just sat down and figured out what mattered most to us, reconnected to our purpose, our value, our plans for the rest of the year 2019. And I just got to tell you, not only did my relationship with Maggie um, get way deeper and more intimate, um, but also I came back with a new perspective, new juice, a new like, uh, you know, just refuel for new actions to take. And um, I encourage every everyone that's listening to this, no matter where you're at, to take that time for yourself because, uh, you know, you're, you're the only person you have whenever life ends and that, that six inches or six feet down, right? So be figuring out and be on a treasure hunt of what matters most to you. So guys, I'm excited to bring this episode in in, right? We got Jose Caballero. He is a candidate for the District 53 in California for Congress. Um, This guy blew this away. If you guys don't know who Jose is, he's a U.S. Navy veteran, served as a nuclear reactor operator for six years, uh, where he spent four uh, of those years on the USS Ronald Reagan out here in San Diego. Now, for, he also served in four deployments in hostile waters in the Gulf, supporting Operation Enduring Freedom and Iraqi Freedom. He's also a community activist. He's the founder of San Diego Progressive Democratic Club and the former president of the organization. And get this, ambitious vet, in 2016, he was actually the national delegate for Bernie Sanders in District 53. Now, he off of that, he launched and uh, created his new progressive political consulting firm. And now with this ambitious vet, we'll be sharing in this episode, not, not only his story, is where he's aiming his sights on now. He's going to be running for congressional candidate for California District 53. Now, he's still running his consulting firm on the side, and he has a brand new fiance, Cheyenne, son, Ryan, and even a dog named Annie. But this guy doesn't let landmines Stop, and I'm excited to share this 
episode with you guys. I hope you find as many golden grenades that I did. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the trenches with Jose Caballero. Let's get it. Jose, brother, are you there? Yes, I am. So thank, you, I, thank you for having me. Absolutely, bro. I'm sure I butchered your last name. Can you please correct yeah, me? Yeah, so it's uh, Jose Caballero. Uh, so that's the Spanish way to say it, but you can say Caballero. That's completely okay, too. So, boom, so boom. yeah, yeah. For sure. Awesome, brother. Well, welcome to the show. We love you having here. Fill the gaps of the introduction. Let us know about who you are as a person, brother. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as you said, I'm a U.S. Navy vet. I was uh, served as a reactor operator aboard the USS Ronald Reagan. Um, I, you know, went to nuclear power school for the two years and then served four years on the Reagan. Was uh, doing Westpac. We were de- that was during the time of the surge deployments. So on the four years I was on the Reagan, we did four and a half deployments. Uh, so it was every year. It was it was brutal work. It was a lot of a lot of in the deck, uh, inside of the belly of the ship, doing a lot of a uh, lot of work. So that was that was definitely a huge experience for me, and uh, got a lot out of that as far as like you know that grit that we love to talk about. Um, because I think it, it's it was one of those defining things. I think everybody in the vet, in our in our community has a story that allows them to define themselves as who they are. Um, so so yeah, and then I, I left the Navy in uh, two thousand and. Um, in 2010 and uh immediately with no direction kind of just floating around had had an uncle come and help me out i was uh i tried to do film production company uh and and i just i i realized that i was just kind of spinning my wheels and then i was like fine i'll go to school um and so so i don't know how far you want me to go into that but uh because we were talking a little bit before but um but you know i i wanted to make sure that i was educated I wanted to know, I felt intelligent, I felt like I was uh, needed to make an impact, but I needed to brush up that, sharpen that mind. Um, mm. So I, so I can go and have direction. So started with my business mm. degree, decided that that wasn't for me, got in political science. Um, and because I just felt like uh, my values didn't align for how I believed I was originally from Texas. So, so then I t- learned some critical thinking skills and then I found out who I was. So when I did that, I realized, I realized that I needed to learn what happened. I needed to learn what happened in the country because I felt like there was too much narrative. The fish kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Both political parties had their own agenda and, and yeah. we need to figure out what the founding fathers wanted. And so what I did is I studied American politics and philosophy. And then from, from there, I learned who the founding fathers were, what they were writing about and who they were studying. So, so that's where I get a lot of my values from the, from the founding of this country. But um, yeah, so I don't want to, and then basically then politics. So yeah. is that yeah. filled in those gaps, I guess? Absolutely, brother. I love your passion. And we were, yeah. we were talking for about 15 minutes before we went live, yeah. Ambitious Fetcher. I apologize for being a couple minutes late. And, uh, you know, it was just his passion, how he articulates things. You can tell us from a source of what matters most to him. And Nike used the buzzword values. A lot of us throw that word around, but we actually don't understand what we truly value. But this is a prime example, and is that that if you get aligned with what you value most in your life, you can enroll anybody into what you're up to in your life. Um, so, Jose, tell us a little bit. You know, you said you went to school, you start figuring out politics. That's kind of, you know, what you started doing. But what was it that had you be like, OK, this is it. Politics is it. You know, this is my purpose out of the uniform. Well, um, well, it's not an easy journey to get there. So I wish it was <laughs> yeah, a yes. snap of a finger uh, to get yeah. there. Um, but really what it, what it was, was when I, when, I, when I found out that I had this passion for, for, for debate, for conversation, to talk to people, meeting people where they are, having a conversation of, of meeting of the minds. So when I, when I started finding that out and I was able to articulate uh, positions and actually transition into values. So when I worked for um, a congresswoman as an intern in DC, I actually was able to do research on the military and 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 the, the victims of sexual violence in the military. And I was able to articulate a 10 page report to the congresswoman on our personal stories as vets and actually have her shift her position on on how we should deal with sexual violence in the military though that when i was able to make that type of shift i knew that i was going to be able to make a big impact in the world and then i decided that i was going to study and be a master of my craft and that and that's when i put in the hours that's when i put in the time i met all the people i continue to meet the people this is a this is a ongoing journey that's going to be for the rest of my life and i accepted that 
that it's going to be an ongoing learning activity. And, and that's what excites me about it. I like to say I'm a vitamin <laughs> because yeah. I come to people's door knocking with a message saying, hey, this is something that's important for you. Come and listen. And, and people know they need to listen. So they take the time to do so. And I, and I honor that time with something that gives them something better for their own lives. And because I get to do that with permission as a politician, I can go and I can spread that message of, of you know, betterment for, for all people that I communicate with. So, so that's my passion, helping people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. helping people 100%. And I, I got to acknowledge you, man, for coming from, you know, serving the Navy as long as you have to going to knocking door to door to, you know, educate people on what they should be focusing on. I really acknowledge for just, you know, dropping down your ego because coming from a guy that was a former Marine corporal, you know, PT stud to then selling a Kirby vacuums door to door, knocking on doors, educating them on why they need a vacuum. I can relate to you for getting out in the trenches. And what I want to point out to any ambitious vet that's listening to this or watching this right now or later on is that there's always a time in your life where you got to do the grunt work. When you were in the uniform, you, when you were a private, you had to clean the shitters. You know, I mean, I didn't like cleaning shitters either, but Hey, once I got good at cleaning shitters, I started cleaning up bigger problems, which if, until you're responsible for small problems like cleaning a shitter, as, as much as we don't like that in the Marine Corps, I mean, you're, if you show responsibility in that, you're also going to gain more opportunity. And that sounds exactly like. Absolutely. I actually took on a national canvas director job for a nonprofit um, for Environment America and CalPERG. And uh, I did that for six months, grueling canvassing work five days a week, knocking on doors, asking for donations, trying to, trying to fight for a cause just so I can be a master of that craft. Because mm -hmm. when you're able to go into somebody's life where they don't expect you and be able to make their life better by being able to join the cause and make sure that they're, they're now educated, that's, that, that's everything. So, so because I took that time and did that grunt work, trained canvassing staff, trained leaders, did all that work, that's why now I can run for U.S. Congress. Like you said, it's that first door no matter how grueling it is to knock on that first door. And after you do it over and over and over, you start knocking on bigger doors and bigger doors. And then yep. eventually you can say, Hey, I can run for Congress. So it's awesome. And yeah. now you're about to knock on the white house's door, which is yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's awesome, bro. So, um, you know, you know, man, going after impact and bigger things based on your individual capabilities, um, when you're out of the uniform, sometimes isn't always sunshine and rainbows. It's yeah. not always wins, right? So let's get real get raw, man. Let's talk about like your biggest failure when you got out of the uniform. So, you know, building your personal absolutely. brand. Like you absolutely. Have. Absolutely. And what did you learn about the process? Yeah, absolutely. I wish I could. I, there are so many failures. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, know, yeah. you know, I've had some pretty good ones. Uh, you know, one that I, fa I, lo I lost my city council race right? Losing my city council race was a very humbling experience. It allowed me to feel that, that, that crushing defeat of, of putting an entire year of your life aside just to try something and to have it be and have it lose right there. Just stopping everything is, is very difficult. But what I learned is that I could run a campaign and then mm -hmm. I did much better than everybody expected at 17%. Um, another huge failure was after winning a campaign when I was, uh, when I was my first campaign management job, I thought everything was going to be great. I'm going to have a great job. I'm going to, you know, have everything's laid out for me because I did something fantastic. Like win a school board race in the second largest school district in the country or yeah, one of the, uh, in the state, sorry, state. And, and I didn't get that job. I didn't get a, I didn't get those applications. I burned through my savings because I didn't have any, and a job would not come after month after month. My girlfriend left me. Everything started to fall apart, and and I was literally standing on a cliff edge, like mm -hmm. literally right there, thinking about stepping off to my death. Now that moment is probably where I was, where I hit the hardest, when I hit the wall the hardest. And it was the defining moment of I had to make a decision. Am I going to live and live for something or am I just going to die the pitiful person that I felt I was at that moment? And I decided that I was going to stand up and say, no, I'm going to get away from the expectations that the world has put on me. I am not going to allow society to say I need to get this degree. I'm not going to allow my, my father to say get a better job or my parents to say be a lawyer. 
I was living in everybody else's expectations. So when somebody said, hey, Jose, why don't you do this big job? I would just do it and take it on like an onlatron. On it wasn't because I wanted to do any of those things. It was because society told me I needed to do those things. Mm -hmm. And when I was able to step away from that and then figure out who Jose Caballero was, that's when I was able to actually get that traction and grow. That failure mm -hmm. was the best thing that has ever happened in my life. And, and, and when I, when I look back on that moment, that's when I say that's when I was actually born, right? That's the moment when I was able to get away from everything else in myself and be myself. And then it took months of learning about more about myself because it's not a snap finger thing. Um, and then, and then I said, you know what, I'm going to run for con I'm going to run for city council. And then when I ran for city council, that's when I was like, you know, I'm throwing my hat over the fence. I'm going to take on this giant task. We'll see where the world takes me. And, and I made it all the way to the end. So, mm -hmm. so, so yeah. So I think that failure is the big one and, and really defines who I am. And I'm sure there's a lot of veterans that can share that story as well. Yeah. And relate to it 100%, man, and not get stopped by it. And that's what I loved about it is you just saw it as a learning experience versus like, you know, just being a failure in your life. And, uh, I really admire you for being a guy that gets down to the source of things, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's what we were talking about before we were live here. And I think that's what's going to have you, you know, win this congressional run um, and also win on bigger levels moving on the futures, because you're always looking at how do you get more proactive? How do you get to the source of things versus get reactive? Because when you're over here on the reactive side of things, um, yeah, it's just not fun, man. Emotions are high. There's no strategy, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I just love how you always got down to the source yeah. of the problem that you were solving either in yourself, in the communities or whatever, brother. So that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that. And, and, you know, and think about that. If, if you were, if you were running for a political office and you were a reactionary, your life would be a, a spinning mess because, because you are getting attacked from everybody and anybody. Right. So so you if you're reacting to every little thing that is said, then then you're, there's no way you're going to keep mental stability. So yes. so you have to stay on message. You have to stay on, on, on uh, stay focused on the goal because there's always going to be uh, distractions. You just keep walking down that path that knows it leads you to victory and don't get distracted. Come on. And that's where the values come in. Right. Mm -hmm. Having that be your inner compass. I love that, brother. So, um, you know, let's talk. Let's dive in more on, you know, this quote that you sent me whenever we booked this interview, man. I was really impressed by it. You said a person's grit is melded in the heart of suffering. The question is, what do we what do you do when it when it once you make it out? I want you to explain that quote. And what was that suffering that you kind of worked your way through? Yeah, absolutely. And I like to call I, I like to say it's grit, uh, because it's, it's a word that I use, because I think everybody's familiar with grit. Um, because, you know, when we make it through something hard in our lives, um, we, we come back, we come out different people. And, and I, and I use the suffering, um, uh, at the heart of suffering because the military experience wasn't, wasn't something that I, I enjoyed greatly. I, I did see it as a point of suffering for me. And this is after the fact, it wasn't so much in the fact that I realized this, but when I realized that once I, once I got out of that, once I survived that experience, I realized I was like, wow, I, I, I carry something. I have, I have grit. This is this is this is what a veteran has. This is where the this is where the American people say, oh, you're a veteran. Thank you for your service. Oh, that's because of the grit that we have, because we had the power and the ability and the courage to stand up for this country and serve under all circumstances, no matter what, at all costs we serve. And that and, and that includes our mental stability. That includes everything. So every military veteran has something I call grit. Now, not only military veterans, but also single mothers when they have to raise their children with, you know, people who, who are, are working paycheck to paycheck to keep a roof over their child's head. Those are all grit experiences because when they make it through those experiences, they're survivors of something amazing because it yeah. is those, major, those minor or major miracles, no matter how you look at it, that define us as humans. Because when that single mother raises that kid 10 years later, that, that child is like, thank you, mom, or thank you, dad, right? And, and those are the things that is the grit. Those are the jewels in our crown. Those are the experiences that make us who we are. And, and so when I say that, I also say something, I have the privilege to suffer. 
because, because when I'm suffering, I know I'm building something and that's why I play a big game. So, so for me, I'm privileged to suffer because I have it, I have it pretty good as an American citizen to suffer in the way that I suffer versus somebody else that's starving for food, somebody else that doesn't even have the ability to get clean water. So for me, I take that suffering on with pride and respect because I know it's going to make me a better person. And the only thing I can do is pay it back. So, so, so that's what I mean when it comes to the, to the quote that I was, what I was talking about. Yeah. I love it, man. And what I love most about it is like, you have, you have had that breaking point that had you, you know, kind of start shifting things and um, start actually start realizing like, wow, like the world is not to get me right. A lot of veterans I talk to a lot of the times, even for myself, you know, I remember in 2013 when I had two failed suicide attempts, I was like, the world doesn't care about me. The world occurred like it was, against me. And that was my, my form of suffering. And it wasn't until I started being like, like looking myself in the mirror and start asking myself, well, what is another way I can look at this and getting down to the source of it and using that as, as a, you know, a learned lesson and learning and figuring out resources and, and connecting with people that could help me stay out of that, that pulled me out of that suffering. So I, I love that because now you can go back and educate the community mm-hmm. and, inspire them in ways that, you know, other people may not be inspiring them. And I think that's why you're being so successful in your political endeavors. So brother, I mean, one of the biggest concepts that you're going, you're diving into now in this, um, this run as a Congress member is for, for, for the veteran community specifically, is this thing called the hero's promise, yes. military veterans bill of rights. Let's dive into this. What is your vision on this man? And how do you think this will impact the veteran community as a whole? So, so when I, when I came up to propose the hero's promise and a military veteran bill of rights, I had one thing in mind, and that is to end the veteran suicides. I am tired. I am angry. I'm pissed off of that. <laughs> the fact that we haven't done anything about the 20 veterans that are killing themselves every day, one in San Diego County alone, like this is insane that we, and, 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 and where, where my heart is on this is that we have representatives in Congress right now that play lip service to veterans and use veterans and military members as cudgels for their own advancement politically. And I've had enough of it. So when I said, I'm going to write this, I'm going to write this with intention to actually solve the problem. So when I wrote it, when we talk about active duty side, I want to make sure we give food and sleep protection or meal and sleep protection to our troops. Well, we got to make sure that we have um, the ability to file a grievance outside of your chain of command. So you don't have the ability. So you, you don't have to file on your boss for, for heinous things. We need the ability for, 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 for military veterans. I mean, I'm sorry, military active duty members to actually request transfer without reprisal. Because if they're not in a command that they love and they're going to be there for the next four years, we can save a life by getting them out of that environment. And then, and, and then at yeah. the end of their service, they should have a hero's pension. So they, they, they should have – so if you do um, up to six years plus two for combat vets, so you would have got an extra two years to this no matter what the number was. So, so you get – let's say you do four years. You, you would then get four years of your base pay out – every month for, for four years. If you're a combat vet, you'd get six. And what that does is it takes, it gives us the ability to transition out of the military because everybody know everybody here knows that, that the military is a completely different identity shift. You need to, yeah. like, you need to change your identity. You're, you're going from calling a head, calling the bathroom, the head to a bathroom. Like right. just those little transitions alone are very, very difficult to handle. So, so, so that's why we have to be able to give ourselves breathing room. And as a veteran, we need to be able to make sure that all our medical care are covered, all of our education, no matter how high of education you want. If you want to be a doctor, be a doctor. You shouldn't have to pay extra. You're a veteran. You, you've already served your time. And if you, and, and, and there are deported veterans. So any veteran that isn't a citizen should get their citizenship. That is just insane that we have veterans that have served this country and haven't, and don't even have the rights of citizenship. And then, and then lastly, the right to mental health care. So, so, so making sure that every veteran, now this is, this is one of the things. So once you get the hero's promise pension, you required for the duration of the pension to have at least one therapy session a month for the entire duration of the, of, of the pension. Why? To destigmatize men- mental health. It doesn't matter how tough you are. It's good to talk about your feelings, no matter what, no matter what you did. So, so we can prevent the cases of PTSD because I wasn't diagnosed with PTSD until six years out of the military. That is insanity. 
That is insanity. And, and so, so for me, there needs to be a change. And that's where my passion comes in when I say the hero's promise. So if you're a vet out there and you like this, or you're active duty out there and you like this, go to my website and share yeah. it. And that, that's that, that is, but we'll talk about that more later, but that's, that's the hero's promise. And I'm going to, and you know, and I'll tell you this, our veteran community is strong. So we have actually went around the country already talked, not me personally, but through social media, have talked to different uh, progressive veterans across this country, and they are supporting the Heroes Promise as well. We're already building a coalition of civilian ones as well, civilian uh, candidates as well, that, that, are, that are supporting the Heroes Promise because they know this is a winning issue and, and that we need to protect our veterans. It's so common sense, it drives me crazy. Oh, I mean, it's just the solution. That's what we have here. Yeah, I love it. And what I love is like the base pay for a couple of years out of the uniform. Because one, one of the things that we found at Vet Training Coaching, um, being you know market research in 2016, as we were working on launching our movement, was stability. Stability was the number one landmine that kills a lot of veterans in the first two years. Is like how they're in this it, literally mindset. Yeah. Of how do I get my feet underneath me financially? And for me, I go and work nightclub downtown San Diego because that's the only thing I know is to protect things. Right. Yeah. So um, I love that you're solving that problem because you're putting more legs underneath the veteran so they can actually start having the peace of mind actually start figuring out things on a higher level, elevated level, like their purpose, their passions, their values and, and stuff like that for those that do choose to do that. And I love also too, that it has a timeline to it. So that they feel that sense of urgency to kind of like, okay, now's the time to start really starting to figure some shit out. Right. Yeah, so absolutely. I love and I also forgot housing is a right too. So let's get the housing that that's all the homeless vets, get them off the street. It's simple. Yeah. Right. And, and, that, and that's something we definitely got to push out as, and, and, as well is to make sure that we solve that problem as well. And, and you're right. We need to be able to have these things for our veterans to figure out. We got to put our boots away. We got to think about what we did and right. we got to think about who we are because a lot of us join as young kids and we're 18 years old, not knowing what the hell we're going to do with our lives, come out doing, doing things that, and, and suffering things that most humans don't suffer. And then they expect us to get out that next month and find a job. That's insane. It's insane. It's, it's, it's unfair and it's not, it's not just, and it, it, it is, it infuriates me. <laughs> as you can yeah, I can tell, man. I love, yeah, it. Yeah. I love this. I love that you went above and beyond to create a concept that is understood based on data that you've already found and all that. You're just doing the work, man. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of people don't do the work and that's why they never, you know, experience higher levels of, of, of satisfaction, all that kind of stuff. So I love that you're doing that. So, um, anything else you want to Add around the hero's promise, anything like that, brother? Well, I mean, the, the hero's promise is is the solution, and and we need to let sure we know, let all our veterans know, and let all of our active duty knows, and our family members let them know about this. I mean, it is it is key to our survival because if we can save one life with the hero's promise, it's worth it. It's worth yeah. it. You know, I mean, what what's it's the worst that can happen? You know, yeah. we save lives. So yeah, yeah, I love it, and I want to talk to you about you know, offline around how we could help fulfill that promise. Um, with our organization, I got tons of people to connect you with. So that's amazing. So brother, we got a tradition here, three golden grenades, man. Um, what, what are three golden grenades that you could drop in here right now to make immediate impact for any ambitious vet that's out of the uniform. That's just like, look, I desire more. Don't know the first steps towards becoming it. What do you have to say to me to help me start pushing my mission forward? Absolutely. Right first is ask yourself this question. What do you want to see in this world? And the reason that I ask that question in that way is because you're looking out. So what, when you see a world that you want, to, what you want to see the world to be, you then can find your place in it. Mm. So when you, when you find out the world from the vision of perfection of what you want, you can then go find the place that you deserve to be in that. Understand what, 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 who you are not just your expectations. My second one, sorry, I didn't sign post. So, so understand, understand who you are and don't live and find out where you're living inside of others' expectations and find out if that's what you want to do. Because if you're living inside of others' expectations, it's not necessarily wrong, but just make sure it's your intention because sometimes we get caught in a blind spot there and it's important to, to look at that. And, and lastly, take on big tasks. Like if you think that you might have a chance for local office or you've been in your hometown for a while, pick up a clipboard, run for office, 
give it a try. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? You're going to learn a new skill. You're going to learn something big and you're going to meet great people. And even if you lose, you have done something and you started a movement that you can then propel for yourself forward. No matter if you want to be in politics later or you just want to start a business or a community group. So, so be big, be bold, start a business, go and do things, fail, fail as many times as possible, because the more you fail, the more resilient you become and the farther on down your journey that you find. And lastly, I like to mention a, a saying that I have, not everybody will understand your journey, but it's your journey that makes a difference in your life. That, that, don't let anybody judge what you're doing. Keep walking, do what you do. Yeah. Keep walking, do what you do. Love it, brother. Th those are amazing golden grenades. And, you know, those have never been shared on this show. Oh, so I you. love those. Ambitious Vet, if you're watching this now, listening to it on the podcast, or you're watching this later, figure out one of those that you can start implementing right now in your life. And if you don't know how to start getting that moving forward, please reach out to Jose. Um, he's inside the tribe. Connect with him. Start asking questions so you can start learning from someone that has done the work. OK, so, Jose, man, how can people inside this tribe, because the ambitious vet community is one that you know desires really to help each other narrow the gap in achieving our next mission. Obviously, yours is bigger impact in the pol pol political world. So how can ambitious vets support that that mission right now? Well, that mission right now, go to my website, Jose for Congress us sign up. Um, uh, that way you can start getting involved with our with our with our emails so you can start seeing what we're up to. Go and, and, and really for the ambitious vets personally, I want you to take the, the, the PDF that's on my website and share it with your friends and start getting feedback. And if you see a lot of feedback, tell me, tell me what you think. I need as much community support as possible to say, is this feasible? Do you have an objection to these points? We need to work on this together. I'm just one man. I need our community to do that. And lastly, if you have extra cash, I know we're all struggling, donate. I want to be the candidate that's running for Congress in the United States that has the most donations, just, just, just donations, not most money, but most donations from veterans and military personnel and their families. I want to be, I want to, I want to be your representative because I'm going to represent you. I may be in San Diego, but every one of these points affect every person that's in, 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 in this country. So I want to be, I want to be your champion. And so, so please do that. Go to Twitter, Jose at Jose um, Caballero SD as well and follow me there. But, but other than that, I'm, I'm going to need your help. You spread the message, donate, follow us on Facebook, follow us on our website. Please, please, please. That's where we're at. Nice. Love it, brother. Um, I, I, you know, I just want to acknowledge you, man. I want to acknowledge you for being who you are for the community, man. I mean, you're someone that hit a huge landmine out of the uniform and worked your way out of it and didn't live into the belief systems of, you know, your Texas family. You know, we were sharing before this, I was raised by a very simple Midwestern family and you chose to break out of those beliefs and figure out what was outside of that box. So brother, I acknowledge you for being the ambitious vet that you are. And thank, thank you. you for being a part of the show. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. And I'm always, I always happy to come back if you need me. <laughs> oh, got it. Love it, brother. Love it. Yeah. Well, there you have it, Ambitious Vet, episode number 57 of the Ambitious Vet Show with Jose Caballero. If you're listening to this and his message, that hero's promise and his vision of what he wants the veteran community to look like, the benefits, the incentives, and stuff like that, getting out of the uniform, if that just touched you one thing at a time, I want you to connect with him in the show notes below. We're going to have his LinkedIn page there. And I want you to visit his website to Ambitious Vet and just support that in any way, shape or form. I was fueled up by it, specifically the base pay for uh, a few years out that I think would really solve the emotional draining problem that us Ambitious Vets deal with in the first couple of years out where we're just trying to, to find that stability, right? So if this moved you as much as um, as it did me, um, make sure that you take time to at least connect with him on LinkedIn, connect him with people, resources, or maybe you just want to go and vote for him. Visit his website so you can follow his journey. Ambitious Fed, if you haven't subscribed, rate, review the podcast yet, make sure you do that. Feedback is what allows anything to improve in life, and we want to improve right beside you in the trenches. And we don't know how to improve if you're not giving us that feedback. Feel free to email me directly at choffman, that's two F's as in Fox, two N's as in Nigel, at 
um, vettrainingcoaching.com. Again, that's C. Hoffman, two Fs, two Ns, at vettrainingcoaching.com. I would love to hear some feedback. Or if you even think you would be a good fit for the show, we're open to having that conversation. Lastly, if you're listening to this, I already know that you're warrior made. But to become passion-driven, ambitious vet, utilize this one golden grenade you just heard, and you're going to find your life being more meaningful. Until next time, let's go get it.